When you picture the Sahara Desert, you probably imagine endless sand dunes, scorching heat, and a landscape seemingly untouched by time. But what if I told you that this iconic desert, the largest hot desert in the world, is undergoing a dramatic transformation right now, and that scientists are deeply concerned about the speed and scale of these changes. It's not a slow, gradual process. It's happening fast, and the implications could be far-reaching. Let's explore what's happening. The Sahara. The very name evokes images of timelessness, of a landscape that has remained unchanged for millennia. But that image is increasingly out of date. Satellite data, ground-based observations, and the lived experiences of people in the region are all telling the same story. The Sahara is changing, and it's changing fast. This video isn't about alarmism. It's about presenting the evidence, exploring the causes, and discussing the consequences, both positive and negative, of a rapidly transforming Sahara. What's driving these changes? And what does it mean for the region and for the planet? First, let's dispel a common misconception. The Sahara isn't just endless sand dunes. While those iconic dunes, called ergs, do exist, they only make up about 15 to 20 percent of the desert's total area. The Sahara is incredibly diverse, with vast gravel plains, called regs, rocky plateaus, called hamadas, mountains, dry valleys, wadis, and even oases with permanent water sources. It's also huge, covering over 3.6 million square miles roughly the size of the United States or China. It spans 11 countries, Algeria, Chad, Egypt, Libya, Mali, Mauritania, Morocco, Niger, Sudan, Tunisia, and Western Sahara. The Sahara also hasn't always been a desert. Its climate has fluctuated dramatically over geological timescales. There have been periods, known as African humid periods, when the Sahara was much wetter and greener, with lakes, rivers, grasslands, and even forests. These periods were driven by changes in the Earth's orbit and tilt, which affected the intensity of the African monsoon. The last African humid period ended about 5,000 to 6,000 years ago, leading to the gradual desertification of the region. And crucially, the Sahara isn't empty. It's home to a surprising variety of plant and animal life, adapted to the harsh conditions. There are nomadic peoples, like the Tuareg, who have lived in the Sahara for centuries, herding livestock, trading, and navigating the vast, challenging landscape. Understanding this context, the Sahara's diversity, its history, and its inhabitants, is essential for understanding the significance of the changes we're seeing now. One of the most striking changes observed in recent decades is the greening of parts of the Sahara, particularly in the Sahel region a semi-arid transition zone along the desert's southern edge. Satellite imagery shows an increase in vegetation cover in certain areas, and some studies have reported an increase in rainfall. This has led to some optimistic claims that the Sahara is shrinking or that climate change is having a positive impact on the region. But the reality is far more complex. While increased rainfall in some areas can lead to more vegetation, it doesn't necessarily mean that the desert is becoming a lush paradise. The increased vegetation is often patchy and ephemeral, and it can be followed by periods of drought. Furthermore, the type of vegetation that's growing is important. In some cases, the greening is due to the expansion of less palatable or less nutritious plant species, which can actually be detrimental to livestock and wildlife. The causes of the greening are also debated. While some of it may be due to increased rainfall linked to climate change, other factors are likely at play, including changes in land use practices, e.g., grazing patterns, agricultural techniques, natural climate variability, e.g., multidecadal oscillations in sea surface temperatures, and even the complex interactions between vegetation, rainfall, and atmospheric dust. It's a complex, interconnected system and it's not as simple as saying climate change is making the Sahara green. While some areas of the Sahara may be experiencing a temporary greening, the overall trend, and the greater long-term concern, is desertification, the process by which fertile land turns into desert. This is happening not just in the Sahara, but in many arid and semi-arid regions around the world, and it's driven by a combination of factors, including climate change, overgrazing, deforestation, 
unsustainable agricultural practices, and population growth. Climate change exacerbates desertification by increasing temperatures, reducing rainfall in some areas, and making rainfall patterns more erratic. This leads to increased evaporation, soil erosion, loss of vegetation cover, and a decline in soil fertility. Overgrazing, often driven by population pressure and poverty, removes vegetation cover, leaving the soil exposed to wind and water erosion. Deforestation, often for fuel wood or to clear land for agriculture, also removes vegetation cover and reduces the soil's ability to retain moisture. Desertification has devastating consequences. It reduces agricultural productivity, leading to food insecurity and famine. It depletes water resources, exacerbating water scarcity and conflict. It forces people to migrate from rural areas to cities, or from one country to another, in search of better living conditions. And it contributes to climate change, as degraded land releases carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. It's a vicious cycle where environmental degradation leads to social and economic problems, which in turn exacerbate environmental degradation. Beyond the gradual processes of greening and desertification, the Sahara is also experiencing more extreme and unpredictable weather events. We've already mentioned the occasional snowfall, which, while rare, is becoming more frequent in some areas. But we're also seeing more intense dust storms, flash floods, and heat waves. Saharan dust storms, also known as Sirocco's or Harmattan's, are a natural phenomenon, but they seem to be increasing in frequency and intensity. These storms can carry vast amounts of dust across the Atlantic Ocean, affecting air quality in Europe, the Caribbean, and even North America. The dust can also have impacts on ecosystems, fertilizing the Amazon rainforest, but also contributing to the formation of algal blooms in the ocean. The causes of the increased dust storm activity are complex and not fully understood, but they likely involve a combination of factors, including changes in wind patterns, land use practices, and climate change. Flash floods, while seemingly paradoxical in a desert environment, can occur when intense rainfall falls on dry, compacted soil that is unable to absorb the water quickly. This can lead to sudden and violent floods in wadis, dry riverbeds, and other low-lying areas, posing a serious threat to people and infrastructure. These events can be particularly devastating in areas where communities are not prepared for them. And of course, the Sahara is already known for its extreme heat, but even by Saharan standards, temperatures are reaching new records. In recent years, several locations in the Sahara have recorded temperatures above 50 degrees Celsius 122 degrees Fahrenheit and some have even approached the all-time record high temperature for the planet, 56.7 degrees Celsius or 134 degrees Fahrenheit, recorded in Death Valley, California, in 1913. These extreme temperatures pose a serious threat to human and animal health, and they can make it virtually impossible to work or travel outdoors during the hottest parts of the day. The changes happening in the Sahara are not just affecting the environment they are also impacting the people who live there. Nomadic communities, who have adapted to the harsh desert conditions for centuries, are facing new challenges as rainfall patterns become more erratic, water sources dry up, and grazing lands are degraded. Traditional ways of life are becoming increasingly difficult to sustain, and many people are being forced to migrate to cities or other areas in search of better opportunities. Climate change is also exacerbating existing social and economic inequalities in the region. The poorest and most vulnerable communities are often the hardest hit by extreme weather events, as they have fewer resources to cope with the impacts. This can lead to increased poverty, food insecurity, and social unrest. The competition for scarce resources, such as water and grazing land, can also fuel conflicts between different groups. But the people of the Sahara are not passive victims. They are adapting to the changing conditions in a variety of ways, using traditional knowledge, innovative technologies, and community-based solutions. They are developing water harvesting techniques, planting drought-resistant crops, diversifying their livelihoods, and restoring degraded land. 
They are also working with scientists and policymakers to develop strategies for mitigating the impacts of climate change and building more resilient communities. So, is the Sahara Desert really changing right before our eyes? The evidence, from satellite data to on-the-ground observations, suggests that it is. The changes are complex, with both greening in some areas and desertification in others, and with a clear trend towards more extreme and unpredictable weather events. But what does this mean for the future of the Sahara, for the people and animals who live there, and for the planet as a whole? Is this a harbinger of things to come in other arid and semi-arid regions around the world? What can we learn from the Sahara's experience that can help us to adapt to a changing climate and to build a more sustainable future? What do you think? Are you concerned about the changes happening in the Sahara? Do you believe climate change is the primary driver, or are other factors more important? What steps do you think we should be taking, as individuals, as communities, and as a global society, to address this challenge? Share your thoughts, your questions, and your ideas in the comments below. Let's have a respectful, informed, and constructive discussion about this critical issue. And if you found this video informative and thought-provoking, please subscribe to the channel. We'll continue to explore the complex issues facing our world, separating fact from fiction, and bringing you the information you need to be an informed and engaged citizen. Give this video a thumbs up to show your support, share it with your friends and family, especially those who are interested in climate science, environmental issues, and the future of our planet, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss our next deep dive. Until next time, stay curious, stay informed, and stay engaged, because the future of our planet depends on it.